There's a difference, I think, between coaches and mentors. Like coaches are great and we all need coaches, but they'll usually like tell you what you need to do and you do it. And that's awesome, that's needed. But mentors will call out the greatness in you because it's already in there. It sounds so simple, but it is so true. You just have to be told who you are instead of who you're not. And you watch these women soar. But God's calling us to live dangerous. And so a lot of times we don't wanna be like Peter and get out of the boat and get on the water. It is like an excuse because when we're stuck, we just don't move. And why are we not moving? Because we're not confident, we're not feeling worthy enough to move because anybody that's stuck, it just means they're not moving. Welcome to the Collective Talk Podcast Season 2, where we share reflections on prayer, family, and ministry. On this episode of the Collective Talk, I'm so excited because we have my beautiful friend from Live Out Loud, Brooke Thomas, with us today. Can you help me welcome Brooke Thomas to the show? I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here, Honestly, Pastor Rochelle. From the first season I've been, I wanted you to come on the show. So this is like my favorite day today. <laughs> the fact that you're here and you really helped me like launch my podcast. And so you were an inspiration to me because you obviously have a podcast and which is incredible by the way. <laughs> and just all that you do, you're an incredible friend and I'm so happy to have you on the show. So thank you so yes. much. I have been waiting for this day Yay. and I just love this podcast. Oh. It's one of my favorites. Oh. Brett actually loves it too. Oh, he no listens. Way. Yes. yes. And so yep. it's for everybody and yeah. we just um I just love everything you're doing oh. and I'm just so happy to be here today. I'm so glad that you're here. <laughs> well, for those that don't know you, can you share a little bit about your background, how you came to Orange County, and then to our church, Ocean's Church, and how we met and all yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in South Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm from Palm Beach, Florida. And then I ended up in North Carolina because I went to college there. I met my husband there. And I've been married for 21 years. Yes. And I've got two daughters that are almost 17, almost 20, like a few weeks away. So um, that's crazy because I know when we met, our girls were just barely so teenagers. Crazy. Yes. And um, I lived in North Carolina for 20 years and just, ra you know, after college, met my husband, raised our kids there. And we had an opportunity to, to come out to California for a business opportunity. And we are East Coast. I mean, Brett's from Atlanta, Georgia. And when we came out here, we fell in love. I mean, how could can you not? Yes. <laughs> Orange Seriously. County. I, we always used to call it the magical fairyland because it was always 70 and sunny. <laughs> There's no bugs. And every, Wait, what did you guys call it? The magical fairyland. Oh, I love that. We're like, welcome to the magical fairyland. <laughs> yes, uh, like, is. where has this place been? Um, just, you know, the weather. Yeah. And I would always say there's no bugs because in South yes. Florida, there, you know, the when it's hot and humid. And that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and then everybody was just happy and healthy. And I just felt like, you know, I could feel, I know for those of us that have moved mm -hmm. here from other places, mm -hmm. everyone has an opinion about California. But for us, we knew when we yeah step foot in California, that it yes. was just, there was something that we felt in the atmosphere, yes. even spiritually that we just mm -hmm. knew we were supposed to be here. And yes. so we literally, Brett calls it burned the boats. We left everything. Wow. He left his job. We left everything that we knew in North Carolina and we just went all in to be here. And wow. one of the best things was finding Ocean's Church. Mm, so, wow. yeah. And I was so excited. How did we meet? Tell me, I'm, I'm like trying to remember when well, was the first time we met? You know who told us about Ocean's yeah. Church is Chris and Nick Kane, oh, Christine Kane right. and Nick Kane. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we had been going to a church yeah. in North Carolina that they knew and they said, yes. okay, I have the perfect church for you. Oh. Oh. And it was 20 or it was 2019 or tw it was, yeah, yeah it was I right like it, before yeah. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I think it was like a couple months before the pandemic wow. and we were right here, you know, at the church, um, yeah. when it was smaller and yes. then when the pandemic hit, it was like, we knew we were home because of the way you guys stayed open. Mm -hmm. And we just felt like, you know, we had moved here. We didn't know anybody. Yeah. And so it just felt so secure having mm. a church that was so spiritually alive. Awesome. And we just hit it off right away with you yeah. guys. I so. like instantly loved you. So, yeah. <laughs> I felt the same way too. <laughs> um, so tell me about how did um, you and Brett meet? Like, how did you guys, did you guys know each other forever? Were you friends before? How, how did you guys meet? No, what's so crazy yeah. is um, I lived in North Carolina and yeah. I had a job. Yeah. I was working in the corporate corporate life. He was in medical sales. And in North Carolina and Charlotte, there's just like a, 
a, uh, an area where everybody that is working either downtown or lives downtown kind of just all hangs out. There's, you know, football stadium there. And we kept running into each other. I don't know. It's, I know it sounds crazy when people are like, love at first sight or <laughs> when you know, you just know. Yeah. And Brett, I mean, I really had not dated a lot. And, and I met him when I was 24 oh. and I had like one boyfriend in college, didn't date before that. And there was something about Brett when I met him, we just connected instantly oh. and we just had this chemistry right away. Yes. And he kept asking me to, he'll tell this story. He kept asking me to just meet him. He's like, Oh, are you going to be there? I'm going to meet you there. I'm going to meet you there. And after a while I was like, I'm not meeting him anywhere. Like he can ask me on a proper date. Oh, he cute. said that when I, I saw him like the third time and he goes, Hey, I asked you to meet me you know, at this other place and you didn't. And I said, if you haven't figured it out yet, unless you ask me on a proper date, I'm not meeting you anywhere. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> and he tells everyone this story because he said, that's when I knew she was mine. <laughs> oh my And gosh. so we, I mean, we started dating and we've just been together ever since. So we've been together for, I mean, we, we only dated for like a year and a half and we got married pretty quick. Oh so. my gosh. And your guys' relationship, I love that. You guys are so close and you can tell you just have yeah, a good marriage. He's my best and friend. And yeah, you yeah, guys I'm just have very that grateful. close relationship. So yeah. I, that's so cool. I yeah. never heard that story about and you guys. And I know, I mean, I know that yeah. sometimes people are like, is that for real? And mm -hmm. I think sometimes I am so grateful. Not yeah. everybody has the best, you know, I, I didn't have like the best example as right. parents or, you know, sometimes you don't always have like the best example yes. in marriage as parents, but I think right. God will give you, you know, yeah. what you ask for. And I prayed, I would just say, Lord, you know, send me yes. like a healthy marriage. Like yeah. I want a best friend. And mm. I just, I just want to encourage everybody to always mm. pray for what you want and God will provide it because First, he was my best. I mean, he is seriously my best friend and we have so much yeah. fun together, but we are, you know, 21 years later, madly <laughs> in love still, and it can get better and better, That's really. Awesome. So well, you guys are so cute <laughs> together. I love it when I see you guys together. Thank you. Well, okay. So you have two daughters, yes. Reagan and Riley, and they are so beautiful, just like you. <laughs> um, and so what is it like being a mom, having this incredible business that you, you run and then being an amazing mom too. Thank you. You are just like an incredible mom. I hear, you know, the behind the scenes stuff that, you know, you'll pull your car over to talk to your <laughs> girls and like, just, you're an amazing mom. And I just want to say Thank that you. to you. So what is that like having this, um, this amazing business and then also being a mom? Well, <sighs> I just want to say, you know, it's been, now I feel like I'm on the other side mm -hmm. of, you know, my daughters are almost 17 and 20, which is crazy. That's crazy. And I remember when mm -hmm. they were babies and mm -hmm. I did have a lot of women come around me and say, you can't have a business and be a good mom. Wow. And I want to say that just because yeah. I think us as women and in, in what we encourage each other or yes. discourage each other. It's really good. Really is powerful. And mm -hmm. I always talk about how... I really believe God created all of us to do what we were called to do. And it looks different for everybody. Yeah. And not everybody is called to do business and be a mom. Some are, are called to be a mom and some yeah. are called to be in business and some mm -hmm. are called to do both. But I will say that I knew like yes. my, like the Holy Spirit in me told me mm -hmm. that I was supposed to create and build and be a businesswoman. And I could also be a good mom. And I remember when the kids were little and I was in my twenties mm -hmm. and early thirties and I felt so discouraged by women not encouraging me. And I think that's why I'm so encouraging to other people because I remember I almost felt like I had to hide it. I almost felt like wow. I had to downplay what I was doing. But I also remember talking to Brett about it and he was like, Brooke, as long as you feel like this is what God's calling you to do yes. and I'm okay with it, then let's let's do this. Mm -hmm. And we decided early on that our marriage and our family might look yeah. a little differently than you know, the average, whatever the average family <laughs> looks like, you yeah. know, and we traded a lot. Like he would drive the girls to school. I mean, we always drove the girls to school. Either I would drive them or he would drive them. And we split a lot of responsibilities because he was working too. And we just, we, there were some non-negotiables that we knew were important to us so and whatever good. anybody else thought it was okay. As long as we were good with the Lord first and then us and then our kids. So mm. we said things like, 
you know, one of us is always going to, you know, pick up and drop off because I felt like even if we worked, yes. as long as I was the, you know, last person they saw before they got dropped off to school or Brett, and then the mm -hmm. first person when we picked them up. So that was, that was something that we always did. Mm -hmm. Now, again, over time, yeah. we, we would, you know, if we needed other people to, that we trusted yes. to fill in, we would, and we yeah. wouldn't feel bad about it. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes as they get older, they're like, can we please have, <laughs> Somebody you know, else. Yeah, the 20 yeah. something, yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, so, um, but you know, I always, the other thing about business yeah. is I committed to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If I created anything and I mm -hmm. built anything yeah. and he blessed it, that I promised him that it, we would always have, a, I would always have a business that if my girls walked in the room and heard me talking or they came to any event or they came to a retreat or they came to anything that they would be proud and they would never hear vulgar language. They would never hear oh. women bashing women. They mm -hmm. would never hear what I didn't want them to hear. I wanted them to hear positivity. I wanted them to hear encouragement. I wanted mm -hmm. to know that whatever I was creating, that they could be sitting right next to me or yes. be in the same room and they would, I would never be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. And so that was really what I built everything off of. Like I wanted them to mm -hmm. know who I was yes. at a young age and mm -hmm. know that it's important to do what you feel called to do, mm -hmm. not what other people tell you that's not to do. So <laughs> powerful and profound. And, and that's what you do so well, Brooke, like you are Thank everybody's you. biggest encourager <laughs> and I, you model that very well. Thank and you. so I'm just like, Everyone that comes in contact with you, you're always encouraging them. And so I, I, I know your girls look up to you so much <laughs> and you. you're an incredible mom. So thank you for sharing that with yes. me. So for those that probably know Brooke, um, they know her from Live Out Loud. Mm -hmm. And I have been to some of your event, to a lot of your events, yes, speaking actually. At, yes, yep, you've and spoken speaking at, at yep, them. Baptizing. <laughs> yes, baptizing, which is incredible. Yeah. At her business event, they're baptizing. It's really, truly a revival at what you're, I mean, <laughs> what you're doing. A business yes, women's revival. It's amazing. But but I love, I love going to it. Can you share with those that don't, haven't, you know, they don't know what Live Out Loud is, and what you do and how that came about. Can you share yes. a little bit so about that? So I always say Live Out Loud was never about being louder. Yeah. It's really about us women being able to speak out loud what's inside yes. and not back down from the call on our life and mm -hmm. to be able to impact others. So yeah. we are women that are in business that mm -hmm. increase our income on purpose to make an impact so that we can increase our impact. Mm -hmm. And really it started because so... It's been 21 years now. I was pregnant with Reagan and I had stage three cancer. And that cancer diagnosis changed the course of my life. And the reason why Live Out Loud was birthed was, you know, after I went through that whole thing, which again, I'm on the other side now. It's not my story anymore. Yeah. I've been 10 years cancer free. Oh, congrats. But it was, thank wow. you. But it was 21 years ago that I was diagnosed. And the doctors told me that I would never live past 40. And they told me the cancer would return unless I aborted the baby and had chemotherapy. So mm. the option at the time, it was um, skin cancer. And skin cancer spreads hard and fast when you're pregnant. Oh. So back then, again, this is 21 years ago. Yes. The doctors had, you know, I went for a routine checkup. They said, you need to go down to oncology. Mm. And I was like, oncology, why do I have to go down to oncology? Yeah. And I went down and they proceeded to give me all of the examples they showed me on the wall you know, all of the different women mm -hmm. that did not do what they told me to do, that they Ugh. either died or the baby died. And they said, you need, according to your blood work, the severity of your blood work, we need to abort the baby and have start the chemotherapy. No way. And no. again, I'm not the woman today that I was then. Yeah. And I can't even imagine if I was even more timid and like scared because I mm -hmm. was scared, but I wasn't timid when it came to decision making. And, wow. and I said, there's no way I'm going to do that. There has to be another option. And the only other option was to cut the cancer out without anesthetic immediately before it spread more. And the reason why I'm telling you all of this is I'll never forget the words that were spoken over me because the doctor said, you can choose that option but the cancer will return and you will never live past 40. Oh my goodness. And it was those words. That's why words are so important to yes. me because we sometimes people speak words over us and they don't even mean it. Sometimes family or, or doctors and they don't even realize how powerful yes. their words carry. Yeah. And I remember for a couple of years, that's mm. all I did was research how I was going mm. to die. <laughs> like how I wasn't going to live past 40, how the cancer was going to return. And when you do things like that, it takes you down a, dark, yes. long path to nowhere. Yeah. And 
the reason why Live Out Loud was started was because yeah. there was a season where I literally believed that. Mm. And I was taking on those words like it was true. And what I discovered was John 10, 10. Like that's when I was explained what John 10, 10 really meant. And I used to not like that scripture because it was like, <laughs> kill, steal, destroy. There's a real enemy. And I'm like, can we just not read that one? But somebody explained to me, it was a pastor at the time and it was a woman pastor. And mm. she said, you know, Brooke, sometimes it can mean steal your confidence, kill your dreams, destroy your future family. Wow. And we got into this whole discussion about the spirit of death mm. and how it's real, yes. but that God has a purpose for every single person on this earth that is born mm. and a purpose to, you know, our purpose is to fulfill the call on our life. Yes. And nobody gets to decide when we leave except right. for the Lord. And there was something that like triggered inside of me about that scripture, mm. because the other side of the scripture says that Jesus came to make sure that we live life and life to the fullest, life in overflow, life in abundance. And so it was in that moment that Live Out Loud started to form mm. just when I was starting to like get back into like, I wanna create, I wanna build. Yes. And I just felt like I'm not just gonna live, but I'm gonna live out loud. I wanna live life to the fullest and live life in overflow and teach other people how to do that because I might as well go all out until <laughs> the Lord decides. And then it was like, I don't know, that energy, that supernatural yes. capacity and energy that the Holy Spirit gives you allowed me to get through those moments and not think about dying anymore, not think about the words that the, that the, that the doctors told me. And I just changed everything. And then my health changed. And I started to realize that what we put in our bodies, what we put in our mind, what we speak out does matter. And I just remember I kept thinking, I'm going to be the healthiest 40-year-old mom that ever lives. And I kept putting hands on my body back before I even understood what I was doing. Right. And I would just be like, Lord, heal my cells, regenerate mm. my cells. I am going to be healthy. I'm not going to, you know, cancer is not my story. And that's why I always say it's not my story, but I'm mm. on the other side now at 47 mm. and I'm healthier than I've ever been. It's not my story. And I know we believe in yes. miracles. Yes. We believe in, you know, just... The, the supernatural power of the living God. Mm -hmm. And that's why I am the way I am. That's mm -hmm. why I do what I do because it's so much bigger than just yes. me. It's, yes. it's us breathing belief in mm -hmm. anybody and everybody that has been told that they can't or they maybe have a death sentence over their marriage, mm -hmm. their finances, their health. And I think a lot of times those you know, words have just been told to us and then we buy into it. Right. And then all of a sudden it becomes us. Right. And I lived that just for a little, little mm. while to understand enough of like, nope, that doesn't work. Mm. And so that's why even in 2020, when we were here yes. and the way that, you know, the church was operating at a level of just belief, mm. like we're not going to buy into what's really going on in the world. We're going to keep serving the Lord. We're going to keep worshiping the Lord. Yes. It brought so many people hope mm. when there was so much hopelessness going on. And hopelessness, again, just brings you down a long, dark path to nowhere. So I was like, well, I've already done that. So I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> yes. And I just think more, mm. I've seen women just rise mm. just by believing at a higher level. And that's oh. what it's all about. Wow. You know, so powerful. So, well, that's such a, your story is so powerful. And that's why I, I instantly connected with you because I've heard you um, tell your story, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's just so powerful to see you on the other side yeah. and um, just your faith you you know your faith on this side but also going through that journey yeah. was powerful and so i know you love women <laughs> and you love connecting with women mm -hmm. and building up women why do you feel like that's important or why do you cuz you know you do all your <laughs> your live out loud calls and all the things that you do with your events yeah. and they're just incredible i i i talked a little bit about that i went to your event and it was like I, you had every speaker, everything that was going on. You had me in tears. It was just so beautiful. And all the the women that really believe and build one another yeah. up. Why do you feel like that's so important? Well, first of all, I think just having daughters and understanding the power of community, the power of our words. I mean, again, I've seen women. I, I'm always like, Lord, you know, you can trust me. So keep bringing them to me because yes. for some reason, I think it's just, again, part of the gifting that God gave me, he puts the most extraordinary women in front of me mm -hmm. and I can see things that they can't see. Mm -hmm. And all I have to do is call out the greatness in them. I, I always say like great mentors 
don't, you know, there's a difference I think between coaches and mentors, like coaches are great and we all need coaches, but they'll usually like tell you what you need to do right. and you do it. And that's awesome. That's needed. But right. mentors will call out the greatness in you because it's already in there. And that's wow. easy for me. Like, I believe that God created everyone with gifts inside and talents. But I think through life and through circumstances and through other people's words, mm. oftentimes I see women just be so pushed down, yes. shut down, knocked down by really shame is like the number one thing. And then shame, trauma, drama, whatever it is. And so for me, it's just something that's so easy to just be able to like, look at someone and be like, do you know how amazing you are? And it's not just, you know, sometimes people will be like, is that toxic positivity? I'm like, <laughs> no, it's like real, real. Yes. Like, I don't know how I can see what I can see, but it's right. like, I feel like I see people the way that like God, God created them. them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And God sees them. And all we have to do, I'm like, compliments are free telling, you know, somebody how amazing they are, but then giving them examples. Like, it's not like, oh, you're just so amazing. It's like, do you realize like wow. what an impact you could have in this so area good. because of your talents and gifts? And mm. I, I've seen w miracle moments. I've seen women start businesses that have grown to millions or hundreds of millions mm. just out of a word, wow. a, a breathing belief in them because mm. they were told they couldn't or they shouldn't. And then when they told they were told they could, wow. it sounds so simple, but it is so true. You just have to be told who you are instead of who you're not. That's and good. you watch these women soar and it's like, how, how could I not want to do that the rest of my life? It's mm. like the biggest blessing to watch it. Wow. And I just thought that that was normal until I realized like not everybody does it's not. <laughs> it's not normal. <laughs> and it's just, I'm just grateful to like, I just keep oh. telling the Lord just every day. I, you know, yes. it says in the Bible to like guard our hearts and, yes. you know, check our hearts. And I'm always like, Lord, just keep checking mm. my heart. As long as you know that you can trust me, just yes. keep sending the people. I promise yeah. I'll keep encouraging. Mm. That's all I want to do the rest of my life because yeah. I see real impact happen. Yes. And everybody has different yeah. um, traits and gifts and together, as you know, yes. like from a church perspective or a friendship perspective together, if we can just combine our gifts and talents mm. and support each other, that's, what's going to change the world. Right. You know, and, and our daughters don't see that enough. No, it's so true. Yeah. But that's beautiful. And you do that so well. Thank and so you. I, I love, honestly, when I went to Your Live Out Loud, I was like, oh my gosh, Brooke's so good at that. And, <laughs> and then all the women there, you've taught them, you've yes. mentored them to be like that as well. And so yeah. is there, what are some of your Live Out Loud retreats that are coming up? Or is there anything new that you have coming up with that or well, that you can we share? Well, we decided um, because of the political climate in 2024, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we usually do our events at the beginning of November. That's right. We decided let's change it up this year. So we're doing right. these tour stops. Yes. So we did one in California right. about a month ago and right. it was super successful. Just kind of a pop-up tour stop, a little bit more intimate. Yes. Um, we're doing one in uh, October in Nashville so cool. and one in November in Palm Beach. And they're tied mm. to other things, other speaking engagements I have, or I have another, um, like a single mom's ministry that I'm yeah. supporting in, in November in Palm Beach. So we just kind of are tying yeah. them to that. And we're seeing, you know what, maybe we'll come to you yes. instead of having this big event in California this year. So, so cool. So that's what we're doing right now. And, um, the elite mastermind and Queens table is open right now for 2025. Okay. And yes. so we're just, you know, um, just adding in the most incredible so women cool. that want to put, we really want to mix business and faith. Yes. And then if you've been watching it all, we just got back from Europe yes. and I, I was did living a, through your yes. Instagram stories. So we did do a pop-up in Paris, which which was just convenient because we had to fly back through Paris. So I said, let's do a pop-up I'm coming to that next one. Brooke. I know, I was going to tell you. So <laughs> we're actually talking about doing something in 2025 around oh. faith and fashion. So, oh I mean, I was going to, you know, we'll have to talk. Okay, yes, so, we'll definitely have to talk. Yes, because there's women, I will say, like women I'm realizing all over. I mean, yeah. we had women come from Germany, um, from Switzerland and France and Italy to this pop-up. And oh. they were hungry for Jesus and business women. And they didn't understand how we were doing it. And some came that like really didn't, they were spiritual, but they really had never heard the gospel. They didn't hear, they wow. didn't know about Jesus. Oh. And it just so happened because God is so good. We had um, uh, two pastors that came over from a church 
And we were able to pray the prayer of salvation with them in French. And then no we, way. and then they translated in English. I was like, is this really happening? That's awesome. I don't even have it on video because <laughs> it was such a special moment. And I was like, okay, God, you're doing something here. So I think in 2025, we're definitely going to do a couple things in Europe or something. Oh my yeah. gosh. So I'm gonna, hopefully you'll come. Yeah, oh, I would love to, bro. <laughs> yes, let's bring the collective. <laughs> yes, come on. <laughs> um, so uh, you're uh, so good at mentorship. So what would you say is the most rewarding part of mentoring women, would you say? I just think really calling out the gold in them, mm -hmm. really being able to boldly claim how amazing they are and why, yeah. how incredible God made them and why, because being a mentor again, to me, that's just reminding other people the impact that they are meant to make on this earth with no delay. And I think that we live in urgent times mm -hmm. and the delay is real. Yeah. And mentorship for me is like accountability mm -hmm. for women, because I, I really only work with women, women to step up and mm -hmm. not delay and not wait and not feel like it's not their time. Because I think everybody, it's their time. So you good. have to just move and go, even if you're not ready, yeah. because whatever you're meant to do, it will create as mm -hmm. you move. Yeah. But I think mentorship at the highest level is really getting people to mm. step up and out and not delay their mm. calling anymore because life is too short yeah. and really getting them to be mm. accountable to the next steps that they need to take mm, so that they good. can get closer to yeah. that impact that they're meant to make. Yeah, so good. So how would you define the next step or um, like level up or, you know, or what would you say that shift would be or what would they need to do to take that next step? Well, yeah. I think that I think every single person, I think we all have, yes. I think we're all meant to grow to another level until the day we die. I right. think that God has, I think every single woman has, and pe every person has value that God has given them. And that value can keep increasing based on their yes. And mm -hmm. so for me, we have um, pillars in Live Out Loud, like habits, skills, network, I, it's basically business, faith, habits, yeah. skills, network. So for mm. me, for somebody to go to the next yeah. level, I know for me, the way that Brett and I operate, the way that we've always gone to the next level is we kind of reevaluate those pillars. Mm. So it's like, okay, are we skilling up? Where do we need to skill up? In the world that we live in, like we all need to skill up like every day, yes. every week. Yeah. And there's no excuses because you can find anything. If you know how to punch in Google, YouTube, yeah. you can train yourself to do anything. And it's amazing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think that any area that we want to skill up in, it just adds value to what you can bring to the world and the impact that you can make. So mm -hmm. we're always kind of following up on, okay, where do we need to skill up? And there's yes. always areas that we can skill up in. And then our habits you know, in order to really be the best, we mm. have to always check in on our habits and make sure mm. that we're, you know, living the best as far as our fitness and nutrition so and all of that. Cause it does matter when you're trying to make an impact, your energy and your health, it yes, matters. That's so true. What so, are some key habits that you can share that you do personally? Well, I know it sounds crazy, yeah. but Brett and I have always been early birds, early risers. It doesn't mean that we yeah. are morning people, but we've chosen that if we are going to be the way that we want to be in our yes. health, that's really the only time. And it started when the kids were little because mm -hmm. we didn't want to wake up when they woke up. We wanted to already have, you know, our endorphins moving and feel good <laughs> yeah. when they woke up. So it started really a long time ago. We'd wake up between 4.30 and 5.30 and just oh for, I know it sounds, yes. you know, but, no, listen, that's but amazing, we're not Brooke. night. So I always say to people like, but we don't stay up late. So <laughs> but this could work the opposite yes, wait, way. What time do you guys go to bed? Probably between like 9 and 9.30. Oh my gosh, Sometimes you're amazing. Sometimes 10 and it's a late <laughs> night. We're getting <laughs> crazy. Crazy night. Yeah. So, yeah. But we um we both work out and as yeah. I've gotten older yeah. with my hormones yeah. and just I've I always shift my workout. So I used to yes. be the crazy cardio in classes. Now it's like heavy weights, yes. 45 minutes, five days a week. Brett and I go together to the gym. It's kind of like yes. our time. Which, by the way, <laughs> you've got to watch her. Inst or follow her on Instagram, Brooke Thomas, because she literally, her workouts are <laughs> so amazing. It makes me sore. <laughs> and I'm like watching you and, and Brett and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to go do that. But I'm, I'm just inspired by well, your workouts. Well, he is definitely like 
the accountability partner that nobody wants because he is like oh, hardcore. I would not oh, go he? half the time oh, really? if it was just up to me. But oh, okay. he is like, and I tell him, I'm like, don't let me you. not go. Yes, he pushed. Yeah, he'll push yeah. me. And he, Brett, so like fun fact, Brett used to be a bodybuilder when he was in oh, college. I, I remember you So that. it's not like this is a new thing for him. He yeah. just, but he's, you know, he just kind of got back into just lifting weights yes. and just being the healthiest version. Mm -hmm. And when you are the healthiest version, mm -hmm. you just feel happy and better. Um, so yeah, we work out. We mm -hmm. definitely always take time though in the morning. I will say we always take at least 30 minutes to an yes. hour where we play worship music. We get on our knees and pray. It's we awesome. take communion and we take a prayer walk, wow. whether it's before our workout or after, depending on what time mm -hmm. our workout is. So those are non-negotiables for us mm. before we get on any business calls. So good. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, how, like I just, those habits, you can tell that you guys have <laughs> set those habits. Yeah. And like, I feel like I've gotten some texts from you <laughs> early in the morning and I, I'm waking up, I, you know, every, well, no I, judgment on the okay, time. Okay. Okay, Brooke. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take, I think I wake up at six, but like, cause I have to take my Chloe to school, but I'm like, I'll get some texts from you. And I'm like, whoa, she's already been up for <laughs> hours. <laughs> well, I will say too, I yeah. just want to say this. If I'm running hard, cause I do believe yeah. in resting too. Yeah. So usually Saturday, Saturdays are the days. And if I need to catch up on Fridays, Fridays or Saturdays, if we do okay. feel like we need some extra sleep, yes. just a little bit longer, those are the two days that we allow ourselves. So okay. we do go pretty hard like Monday through Thursday, but we always know like Friday and Saturday are right around the corner. So if yeah. we need to catch up, cause I, I also don't believe in like burning yourself out yes. or Again, as you increase in age, you have to like really get more That's sleep true. and drink more water and do yes. all the things that are going to help you. And I know when I'm tapping out yeah. of like energy and I'm like, okay, I can't push the way I used to. I know yeah. I sound like that's old, but it, <laughs> but you do have to, as a woman, you know, in your mid to mid forties to like late you know, 60s, yeah. you have to really be careful with what you used to do versus what you do as far as your energy, because so it does affect your body. So true. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I just am, you know, implementing these, um, just new habits in the morning as well. I'm always trying to switch up some habits mm -hmm. that, I mean, um, I, I'll get up early, but then, um, I just started, well, a while ago I did energized health. It's a, it's oh, like yes. that walking mm -hmm. and then you drinking tons of water. So oh, yes. I didn't normally ever drink a lot of water, which mm -hmm. is so bad, but I never did. And so now I'm in this thing where I drink tons of water, yes. which I feel mm -hmm. like I am, have more energy. Yes. So it's been awesome. Yes. So you, I, I love the that. water is important. Yes. <laughs> so how would you say, Brooke, that you balance, um, your faith in your business? How do you, how do those complement each other? I get other this in question all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I feel really grateful that the experience that I went through at 26 years old with the stage three cancer Real, I mean, I went through an experience at a young age where I decided that I didn't want to do life or business without my faith. I had an experience with Jesus that really helped me to understand at that age what was really important. Mm -hmm. And I remember praying on my knees and just crying out to God and being like, Lord, if you save me, you know, if I really do have a purpose on this earth, then I don't want to do anything outside of you and and making sure I give you the credit, but I don't know what that looks like. I need you to teach me. At, at that time, I was even opening up my Bible and not even understanding it mm -hmm. because my mom's side of the family is Jewish and I had gone, grown up going to different churches from da different dads and I didn't really understand. I wanted to understand the Bible, but I didn't. Yeah, and so well. I would open it up and a pastor said, just open up the Bible and ask God to speak to you. And don't worry about the things that you don't understand, but the things that you, that he wants you to know, you'll know. And mm -hmm. it was like, when I started praying this, this was, you know, 21 years ago, the, it was so crazy. I mean, it's easier to start in the new Testament and yeah, do this, yes. but um, I just remember words were just like mm -hmm. popping out at me and everything at first was about how much he loved me. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, wait, where is all the, where, where are all the parts where I'm in trouble or <laughs> all the rules? Yes. And it was just like, he just kept telling me how much he loved me and that, you know, like everything was going to be okay, basically. And I believed it. And I just kept saying, God, whatever you give me, I just want to always claim your name and I don't want to be afraid of it. So I, I had a different perspective of business, like everything I've created since then, mm. ha, I've always put my faith into it because I would tell people, I'm not trying to put my faith onto you, but I cannot 
take any credit for this, none. And I can't do this without telling you how and why I've done it. Oh. And so putting faith into business has just been something I've done from the very beginning. I know it's becoming a little bit more acceptable or people are combining it more now, yeah. but I don't know how to do it any other way. And I don't want to ever, I always tell people I'm unhirable because <laughs> I just create what I want to create and I say what I want to say. And I don't worry about what I can and cannot say because mm. I don't know how to do business any other way oh. except to tell the truth about, you know, my faith in it. Mm. So. Well, it's, it's who you are. Yeah. That's like, and it's so beautiful to watch you Thank just be you. who God's made you to be. Mm -hmm. And so, um, is there anyone that, uh, has been like, uh, someone that you've mentored and that has just changed drastically through you mentoring them. And there, is there a special story you oh, can share? There's so many stories. Yeah. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I see consistently mm -hmm. are women that come in that are truly spectacular. I mean, incredible women. And they have, most of the women have been a little bit put down or pushed down by other women mm -hmm. because of their success. So I either have mm -hmm. a high, very high level woman that comes in yes. and she's had a lot of success and she's lost friends. She's been betrayed. She's been stolen from, you know, like, and she just needs other women in a sacred space that actually will support her or that she can be real with or that she can have high level business conversations with and pray with that are not going to turn their back on her, be jealous of her. They're going to say, yes, you go do that. We're praying for you. Call us afterwards, text us afterwards. Let us know how it went. We're covering you. There's nothing better than being covered before you go into a business meeting or a sales meeting or because, I mean, retreats and events, a lot of the women in my network are doing retreats and events and, you know, it's, it's like nerve wracking. And so now we have a whole nother level of group, mm. groups of women in my network that show up and they go to the event and they pray over all the chairs or they go to where they're having something and they support, mm. but they don't awesome. just show up and just sit there and take pictures. They, they're going in there before and they're praying over her. They're praying over the building. They're praying if they're not there. And I have seen Seriously, it, wow. it makes such a huge difference instead of women feeling like they have to do it alone or they're yeah. isolated. And so mm. that's one level. And then the other level is the woman that comes in and she just wants to start um, mm. creating, building. She's kind of more yes. at the basic level or just intermediate level, but she, sh her confidence is not mm. where it needs to be. And yes. so so many stories. I probably have more stories of women coming in and the boldness and mm. the confidence wasn't there. Yes. And all it takes is like a good three, four, five mm. months of like real genuine connections yes. with real genuine women calling out the best in her, yes. saying who she is instead of who she's not, praying over her and and them seeing that it's real mm. and then a boldness rises up in them. And then that's why it just becomes yes. like, it, it's like a domino effect. And so yeah. I, I, I see women increase again, um, their income, because that's another thing with money mm -hmm. mindset and feeling worthy enough to build something that's significant. And if they have that skill set to do it, yeah. that they don't feel guilty about it because mm -hmm. a lot of them have the heart to make a generous impact. And I think that we serve an extravagant God mm -hmm. that gives everybody different ways to make an impact. And the women that are called to business, yes. that are called to create and build and to increase their income, if they know it's acceptable to make an impact and they're all making these impacts together, yes. it's just, I've seen a level of confidence and boldness rise and that's really the majority of the stories with everyone that comes in. Wow, that's so cool. And there's been so many stories. I oh. mean, so many women that I've seen you mentor and then they come out like, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're different. They're and they just, do business together. They, yes, they're supporting they're each support, other. You see it. Yes, I, they're encouraging one another mm -hmm. and it's so cool, but it's just a reflection of you. So, you. but I, um, what do you tell women that are, that you're mentoring that, um, if they feel stuck, stuck in their business, stuck in their faith, mm -hmm. uh, what would you tell them or what do you tell them how to get unstuck? I, I think stuck is just one of those yeah. places that feel, I mean, I think when we're not confident mm. in what we're called to do, we feel stuck. I think stuck That's is, good. I don't mean to say this 
any other way than I'm just going to say it. I, it is like an excuse mm. because when we're stuck, we just don't move. And why wow. are we not moving? Mm -hmm. Because we're not confident. Yes. Maybe um, we're, we're not feeling worthy enough to move because anybody that's stuck, it just means they're not moving. And so I always say like, what's the next best step that you need to take in this area so that you can get unstuck. So why are you stuck? Are you really stuck? Or is it just that you need to like take one next step? So if, so let's it's say really it's good. your faith. Okay, where are you stuck in your faith? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how to pray yeah. or I don't know how to read the word or I don't know how to worship. Okay, well, the only way to do, we can't do that for them. So I always say for me, one of the biggest wake up calls when I was 26 and I had that, mm -hmm. I did go through a period where I wanted somebody to show up on my door ring the bell and say, I'm going to do your life today. I'm going to work mm -hmm. out for you. I'm going to do your faith for you. I'm going to do your business for you, but yeah. that doesn't happen. Yeah. And so I had to learn, even though I wanted people to feel bad for me, and I'm sure they did, but people feeling bad for you or doing things for you is not going to help you long-term. Right. So we have to take responsibility. So taking responsibility mm -hmm. for being stuck, the only thing I know to do is move. So mm -hmm. it's like, what do you need to do? Okay. I don't know how to pray. Okay. Then let's pray. Let's just do it. Let's do it until you're not afraid. Let's do it until you're not stuck. I don't know how to worship. Well, let's just put on worship music and do it. Yeah. And so I've, I've really gotten to a place where it's like, you're going to be uncomfortable until you're not. Yeah. You've got to pray until it breaks. You've got to mm. worship until you feel comfortable. Yes. You've got, I always say, raise, raise those hands, girls. Like, <laughs> like, like, you know, it's like, well, not, I felt uncomfortable too. I yes. was that girl. Yeah. I felt uncomfortable speaking in front of people. I felt uncomfortable raising my hands, but you just do it until you're not. And that's how you get unstuck. Same thing with business. So if you're stuck in business, why are you stuck? It's being self-aware. Why are you stuck? Where are you start stuck? And what's the next best thing? Well, I don't mm. know how to do sales. Okay, so then let's get good at sales. Yeah. What do we need to do to get good at sales? You've got to talk to more people. Mm. You've got to get really uncomfortable. I think that's the biggest it's thing is so we have to embarrass ourselves fully. Yeah. I mean, I, I've li literally lived most of my life humiliated, <laughs> embarrassed, getting made fun of, yeah. really, until, until I... It took, I mean, it's taken over a decade to get to a place where it's okay. Yeah. Like I just assume people are making fun of me and it's okay. You know, <laughs> or I make fun of myself and yes, it's okay yes. because you have to almost do that to get to bold confidence wow. and to know that like it really, you're, no one's really stuck. Yes. It's a choice. Yeah. And I know that's kind of like harsh to say that, mm -hmm. but it's really true. It is an excuse because we get to choose to move Yeah, and we get to choose to be self-aware of like, mm -hmm. why do I feel stuck? What yes. am I, and what am I going to do about it? Yeah. It's so true. And I feel like uh, the Western civilization or we all love <laughs> comfort. Yes. We love to be comfortable. We <laughs> yes. love our comfort. Mm -hmm. You know, we come to church, we sit in our same pew, yeah. we sit in our same rows, we we go to the same coffee shops, we do mm -hmm. all the same thing. So it's all we love comfort. And and I feel like, you know, the life of a Christian and a, dis a, and a disciple mm -hmm. is yeah. living the risk. We have to li live that risk-free yes. life mm -hmm. or, or we, we, we want to live a risk-free mm -hmm. life, but God's calling us to live dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we don't want to be like Peter and get out of the boat yeah. and get on the water. Yeah. And when the waves come, that's mm -hmm. when we're like, okay, oh my gosh, I didn't mm -hmm. know that there was going to be waves. Yeah. I didn't know that there was going to be like <laughs> sharks under the waves. Oh, I don't yeah. know, you know, but you keep looking to Jesus. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that, you know, we live in those comfort zones mm -hmm. and we, um, we love the risk-free life yeah. and, but God's calling us as as Christians and I believe disciples to live dangerous and <laughs> to really be obedient to what He's mm -hmm. calling us to do. And you do that so well, Brooke. Thank you. Is, and, is... and when you think of when you say dangerous, I think of pain. Yeah. Like, oh it's no, like a no, pain. no, no, a little okay. bit of oh, pain. Oh yeah, true. No, I mean we we yes. have to kind of go through the pain mm, a little bit of how bad do you want it? I always say, how bad do you want what you want? Really, because a lot of people will say, I want a deeper faith. I want to pray comfortably out loud, or I want a successful business. And I always say like, we all want these things, but are we acting like it? That's so good. And we have to go through some pain mm -hmm. and, and the pain is the uncomfortableness. The pain is like, like you said, I'm not comfortable. This is really painful. It's always mm -hmm. awkward and painful if people misunderstand you or they yeah. make fun of you or they talk about you. But if God keeps calling you to it, you have to just keep moving and yes. he will work it out. Yes. If you, like again, Peter on the boat, like if you don't 
take your eyes off him. Because the minute you do and you start to think about, if you start to scroll social media <laughs> yeah. or you listen to what somebody else says versus mm -hmm. what God says, then you you fall, you go down. Yes. And so that's why, again, being in community like this, being yes. around people that are going to bring out mm -hmm. the best in you is yeah. so important because yeah. I think that's what Jesus would do. You yes, know? that's so good. And what way do you find that your faith has impacted you? Um, just with your business and being a mom and everything that you do, in what way has faith impacted you? I mean, it's everything because I used to, I always say, before I understood who Jesus really was, yeah. like before I understood what faith really was, I mm. relied, like everything was about like what I could control mm. and what I could do. And even as a parent, right? Like, mm. I can't control this and we're not supposed to. And I think the biggest thing with faith with me, yeah. with business and being a parent that mm. is a, is a daily, um, it, it's not a daily struggle. It's like a daily learning, wow. you know, and, 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 um, like a habit that I build. Mm. I have to remember because we still listen, no matter how successful you are or not, or whatever mm. it looks like, we all yeah. have things come against us every day, yeah. like challenges, different things. And what I've learned, and I have enough people around me too, that if I'm really on the floor crying, they're like, remember what you say. <laughs> um, and really it's like getting on my knees. There's something about the surrender, mm. you know, of getting on your knees and just being like, okay, God, mm. I actually don't control this. Yeah. You do. You're mm. the one that brought it. Yeah. You're the one that builds it. You're the one that brings the increase. So even if it feels, because there's so many things in business that come against us where we feel like, and I, this happens to me still, where I feel like, is it all going to be taken away? Or is this going to happen? Or is that going to happen? Or what if that happens? And I have to stop and say, okay, God, you, you're you the one that built this, not me. Yes, You're the one that brings the increase, not me. Mm -hmm. You're the one that will open up doors that no man can shut. And I almost have to like, there's that scripture in Mark that says, um, I believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. That's good. And so sometimes I literally have to walk outside and yes. I have to put my hand on my heart and go, okay, God, I want to make sure the enemy knows I believe, like, I know you've called me to this. I know I'm anointed for this. I believe, but right now, because of this situation, I need help with you helping me overcome my unbelief wow. because I want to be honest about it. But I want the enemy to know mm. you're not going to mess with me because God's my father and he's going to work it out. But I want to be yes. honest about how I feel. And mm -hmm. um, I just think that that piece, and then it, mm -hmm. as parents, you know, we've had conversations around yes. sometimes with our, you know, our daughters, like when we can't mm -hmm. help or we can't control what's happening to them or right. how they feel, I have to remember that that isn't my job. That's and so good. Brett and I had, we've become, we just, we literally get on our knees or we'll go in the car if they're inside <laughs> yeah. and we'll just say, God, mm -hmm. you're their father. Yes. You're the parent. Yeah. We don't know how to parent right now. This mm. is something we've never experienced before. Yes. Instead of us trying to control it, mm. it's like, what what can you do for us right now? Because she's your daughter. Yes. And there's something about that that just the faith piece just frees you from thinking mm. that we actually have control because we don't. Right. And that to me was like the biggest like aha moment in my faith, like probably 10, 12 years ago that I didn't realize because, you know, we're taught so many things yeah. when we're young to, that we do have control and we don't. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. It's so powerful. Yeah. I, I think that's a huge thing with uh, like parenting mm -hmm. is control. Like, <laughs> like I remember my mom, she would always say that she would pray for us and she just had to give up control to God <laughs> and like, okay, God, I, I'm not their savior. Right. Jesus is our savior mm -hmm. and he's going to, you know, work in them and he's going to help them. And he's, yes. you know, and they have so to have their own experience. They have to, yes. And so I think a lot of times we, as parents try to control and we can't be their saviors mm -hmm. because Jesus Christ is our savior. Yeah. And so, um, I've, I've learned that I can't be, um, a controlling mom, but just trust, right. you know, in Proverbs three, it says, trust in Lord with all your heart and lean mm -hmm. not on, on your own understanding, but in all your ways, yeah. acknowledge him and he will direct, I believe their steps it's and so all true. of that. So, um, I just want to move as we end, but move to just purpose mm -hmm. and what do you think the, um, purposes and the meaning, um, of purpose and what does living a life of purpose mean to you? I think again, going back to that, you know, I know it sounds morbid, but like the spirit of death, right? Like there's a real enemy that we need to acknowledge that will try to bring the spirit of death 
upon us in other ways. And I think it, I know it sounds strong, but it's important that we talk about these things because I believe that God created all of us on purpose and for a purpose. That's good. And when we believe that and we understand that we have a purpose to fulfill on this earth, like mm. I, and I believe that for everyone. Yes. That's another thing that I see is women that actually think like your purpose is bigger than mine or my mm. purpose is bigger than yours or mm. they don't have a purpose because it doesn't look a certain way. And that wow. we know that's not true. Right. Every single person has value. Every single person was born on purpose mm. and for purpose. And the purpose is to fulfill whatever it is that God has you fulfilling on this so earth. Good. And that's why it's so important to clear out the mm. clutter and mm. understand that God created you for something. Yes. And that's exciting. Yes. I mean, the world will tell you that you're not. Right. And when you have other people saying, no, you are, yeah. that's who changes the world. And so purpose is so important because if we go through life without a purpose, I mean, yeah. that's why Brett and I will always say like, we're never going to resign. Yeah. I mean, we're never going to retire, we said. We're never gonna retire. <laughs> Because we feel like you want to always have purpose in everything that you do. And, and then when you're done with one season or one thing, okay, look, what's the next purpose? Wow. And I think that there's so many people that just don't even know how important mm. their purpose on this yeah. earth is, even if it looks completely different mm. to somebody else. And um, I, I, again, I, I think that it's the opposite of the spirit of death. It's like the spirit of life that God gave us yes. to fulfill that call that yeah. he has called us to. Mm, that's so good. I love that. I love that. Um, and purpose is so important, like mm -hmm. you were saying. And so I feel like you were, we all know that we were made by, well, you and I know this. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of people know yeah. this, but you were made by God mm -hmm. and for God. And yeah. until you know that, mm -hmm. you know, I think it was the great Rick Warren that said that until you know that, mm -hmm. um, life doesn't just doesn't make sense. Right. And yeah. so you were made by God and you were made mm -hmm. for God. Yeah. But until you realize that, mm -hmm. life will not make sense. Mm -hmm. And so what can you, as we end the show, um, if the listeners that are watching, for those that are maybe they're a business woman or maybe they are a stay-at-home mom or whatever it is, um, and they're listening to this episode mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, man, I, I want to know my purpose. Mm -hmm. How can I understand my purpose and, and know my purpose? And so what would you say the first steps in understanding and knowing your purpose? I think if you're not sure of your purpose, the number one thing that I know works, this is not just a cliche, it really works. First of all, go serve somewhere that breaks your heart. Figure out what breaks your heart. Figure out what really keeps you up at night that bothers you, that you're actually really good at serving. And I promise you, you'll find your purpose. Because for me, you know, being a woman and being a woman that felt discouraged in certain areas, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I could make a business mm -hmm. out of just encouraging women. And I know yeah. it's so much more than that, but at the base of it, it is encouragement to women and calling out their gifting. And the enemy would lie to me and say, that's not enough. Wow. That's not enough for you to do. You can't mm. make a business out of that. And I think that so many times our purpose and what we're supposed to create and build is something that just comes so naturally to us. It's something that breaks our heart. It's something that we want to go serve and we can't even sleep at night until it's, you know, it's really done. Good. And so for me, seeing women rise because of mm. an encouraging word or because you're telling them something that you see that nobody else will tell them and they're reminded. So to good. me, I'm like, that is so amazing because they go from stuck to action. And so I know that's my purpose. I know that God gave me gifts to do that and see that. So why wouldn't I use that? Why wouldn't I call that out? And I also believe with our purpose, when we're trying to figure it out, I always say, and I don't, I don't want to put this on anyone, but I'm just saying <laughs> we usually get attacked at our highest calling. So oftentimes, and I don't want to like put that on anybody, but I also want to say, if you're feeling attacked in a certain area, mm. like get with the Lord and say, okay, why am I being attacked in this area? Mm. What can I do about it? Am I supposed to, you know, 
make this part of my purpose. That's good. And I think that's where a lot of times people find purpose, where their heart's mm. broken, where they're getting attacked, mm. because usually in them, there's something that can actually conquer that yes. and they can create through that. Wow, it's really powerful. So the area that you're being attacked in, God wants to use you I mean, you if you think about it, we it don't have to get true. into it, but I like know. every woman that I know that usually mm -hmm. has like something coming against her in this area, it's usually her biggest strength or her biggest heart to right. want to make changes. Yes, exactly. You know what's so funny is a lot of people say you, you get attacked, um, you know, via your weaknesses. But I'm like, I, I feel like I get attacked <laughs> with my greatest strengths. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with people saying things, uh, you know, there's just yes. so many things like that. That, mm -hmm. but I, I agree with yeah. you. I think it's the great your greatest strengths yes. that you get attacked the most, and because that's what God wants to. Exactly. He's anointed you for, mm -hmm. and He wants to use you for, and the enemy knows that. And he doesn't want you to be no. loud and to be vocal or to do what God's called you and anointed you to be. And, yeah. and you can only be your most authentic self. And yeah. that's who God's anointing. And mm -hmm. so I love this too, is living in, living in the light of eternity. Really, I believe truly for me changes my priorities. Mm -hmm. And so until I that's how I view life when mm -hmm. I wake up. That's, that's, I know both of you and I, both you and I, we value that we live mm -hmm. in the light of eternity. Yeah. And so it changes your priorities, mm -hmm. your purpose. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like that, that God has a master plan. Yeah. And, you know, we're only living in this life mm -hmm. for however long God yeah. allows us to live mm -hmm. in this life. And, and so it's a beautiful thing that God allows us to do what he wants us and he's called us to do. But mm -hmm. until you find that this life, you know, it, 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 it will come and go. Mm -hmm. Mark always says, yeah. we, you know, everybody hovers around. I mean, everybody's not going to make it off this rock alive. We're all, <laughs> we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. But until you find out what God's called you to do, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the most important things I believe yeah. truly in life mm -hmm. is to know what God's called you to do. Mm -hmm. And then once you find that out, yeah. then do it with all your might. Yes. Yeah. It's, so. it's just like that John 10, 10 verse. Mm -hmm. Again, it was the, it was the scripture that I didn't ever want to say out loud. It scared me again, like as yeah. a little girl, like kill, steal, destroy. But when yeah. you really do match that, those words up with if you think kill your confidence, steal your family, destroy your dreams or whatever, fill it in what you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. But then the other side is, but Jesus came to give us life and life and overflow, life and yes. abundance. And so I would say too, back to the purpose, mm -hmm. anyone that's struggling with like, mm -hmm. what am I here for? What is my purpose? I do think all of us, when we get really honest with ourselves and we say, what really lights me up? Like you said, mm -hmm. what really drives me and yes. lights me up that God created me to feel alive in. Yes. And again, it, it could be as simple as I remember God saying, I remember him saying, I, like, it's it's your encouragement. It's mm -hmm. building others up. And I'm like, but how am I going to, how is that anything? Because it yeah. felt like that's not anything. Oh. And I remember saying, can you help me find women? This was, mm -hmm. you know, 15 years ago. Can you help me find women like me mm -hmm. that really do want to build up women yes. or that see the best in them? Like, where are they, Lord? Mm -hmm. And this is when I was living in a country club neighborhood and yeah. women were saying, you can't do both. You mm -hmm. can't be a mom, a good mom and a businesswoman. And I felt so discouraged. I remember asking, where are the women? I know that I can do both, but I need, yeah. we all need to look at examples too. And we need yeah. support. And very clearly God said, go create it. They're waiting for you. He said, go create it. And I was like, oh, but I want them to come to me <laughs> yeah. and invite me. Yeah. And that's why I'm always like inviting people or they call me the bring her at church. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Because being invited, yeah. there's so many people that don't understand mm. the value of just being invited and included in, oh. even if it's in business and they have to invest in themselves, it's still an invitation to invest in themselves. Mm. It's an invitation to grow and create. And it's an invitation to come sit at church or whatever it is. That's all investing in yourself to say yes. But the other person on the other side mm. has to be vocal and invite because everyone's just walking around assuming I'm not invited or she wouldn't want to come. And that's it's just so not true. true, you know? Mm. So you do a great job of that too, Aww. just making everyone around you feel included and mm. loved on. And so I just think that again, for our daughters, yeah. 
it's so important for them to see that in yes. women, in their moms. So good. I love that. I, oh my gosh. And you're incredible at that. So Brooke, thank you're, you. I mean, you make everyone around you feel included. <laughs> thank and you. So thank you for being on my thank show you. on this season so two. Fun. I know. Yay. I'm like, we're going to have you on again, Brooke. Oh, thank you so I much. I can't wait to have you back on mine. Oh, You've been on mine I know. before. I'm so You're excited. coming back 2024. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, this has been such a special thank episode you. and you're an incredible friend. So thank, thank you for you. coming on the show. Thank you so much for yes. having me. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Collective Talk, where we explored next level living with your business and faith. Stay tuned for future episodes as we dive in the topics of prayer, family, and ministry. Oh.